Welcome to Evening Prayers for Friday the 13th of August. Our theme for this evening is the assurance which comes through our traditions. Let us pray. Lord, we have heard your call as it has echoed down the generations through history and tradition, through scripture and preaching, through the lives and witnesses of faithful people. We have heard your call reaching out to us as we have worshipped, as we have prayed, as we have wrestled with doubt and unbelief. Hear us now as we call out to you in praise and prayer, in honest confession, and as we intercede for the needs of the world. Amen. Well, I think a, a lovely way to begin our, our prayers based on our tradition is to start with the great hymn of praise, which is the tradition and the heritage of Methodism. And can it be?
chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, firm and followed me. Today's reading follows on from the one we focused on last night. We'd left King David's fourth son, Adonijah, having gathered together people that supported him and performing a ritual of his own making to secure his place as the new king of Israel, as David was reaching the end of his life. Adonijah was doing this because he knew that it was God's plan for Solomon to become the next king after David. And if Adonijah waited until David had died, then this process would happen automatically. The prophet Nathan was advising Bathsheba, Solomon's mom, of what she needed to do in order to protect her son and protect his new role as king. And she followed Nathan's instructions to the letter and our reading tonight tells us what happened next. 1 Kings chapter 1 verses 28 to 40. Then King David said, call in Bathsheba. So she came into the king's presence and stood before him. The king then took an oath. As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble, I will surely carry out this very day what I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne in my place. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground, prostrating herself before the king and said, May my lord, King David, live forever. King David said, calling Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet and Benaiah son of Joadiah. When they came before the king, he said to them, Take your lord's servants with you and have Solomon, my son, mount my own mule and take him down to Gion. Then have Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, long live King Solomon. Then you are to go up with him and he is to sit on my throne and reign in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaiah, son of Jeodiah, answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my Lord, the King, so declare it. As the Lord was with my Lord, the King, so may he be with Solomon to make his throne even greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah son of Jeodiah, the Kerathites and the Pelathites went down and had Solomon mount King David's mule and they escorted him to Gion. Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon. Then they sounded the trumpet and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon! And all the people went up after him, playing pipes and rejoicing greatly, so that the ground shook with the sound.
So here we have in a very short space of time a second coronation. In fact, while this is happening with Solomon, Adonijah is having his uh, post-coronation celebration meal with those who have supported him. But this coronation of Solomon is different to that of Adonijah. It follows the traditions of Israel. It follows the way that kings were chosen and it involves the people who were most closely connected to God in Israel. The people had supported Adonijah at his coronation, but now they saw the rituals and traditions they recognised, which connected them to their history, to their ancestors and to God. And so they took Solomon as their true king. And an interesting thing was to come from this, because although tradition had been followed to appoint Solomon, Solomon was to change the tradition of king. He was to be a king in a completely different way to that that David had followed. Solomon's rule was based on wisdom, on putting the people first, while David's rule had been based on military might and also at times focused more on himself and getting his own way. And Adonijah would have carried on David's way of ruling. The tradition of how the king reflected God in the community was to change, but it took the connection between the people and their traditions of coronation in order to put the people in a place of safety and security to allow new traditions to begin. And this is what our Christian traditions and rituals offer to us. Not just a way of doing things which can never change, but a way of connecting us deep into our faith so that we arrive at a point where change is no longer threatening, but becomes the excitement of kingdom growth. Let us pray. Great God of creation. Once it was people's tradition to hide their faces in your presence, for they thought you too awesome to look upon. As you were righteous, they sought fierce justice. Keep the law an eye for an eye. But in Christ Jesus, you changed our view, teaching us that you live amongst us, ready to be seen. As a good shepherd, guiding and guarding, like a supporting vine, bearing fruit, like a beam of light, chasing away darkness. As a bridegroom, loving, faithful and joyful. You taught us to live in love and turn the other cheek. You change one tradition for another. You turn mourning into dancing, ignorance into wisdom, condemnation to compassion. You are great indeed and glorious, and you make all things new. Loving God, as we realign ourselves with you this day, may we cling to those things that are unforgettable in your sight, while laying down the petty routines which inhabit and inhibit our Christian living. Amen. As we've heard the story of a new king being crowned for Israel, we turn to some 8th century prayers. They're drawn from biblical texts and they give us ways and names to think about Christ as we call him to us. O oh, wisdom, come to us wisdom from on high, help us to order our lives with thoughtfulness. O Lord Adonai, come to us, Lord, a leader of your people, save us from our sins. O Root of Jesse, come to us, Root of Jesse, and be a sign, come quickly to save us. O Key of David, come, Key of David, release us from all that imprisons us. O morning star, come morning star, shine your righteousness upon us and lighten our darkness. O king of the nations, come king of the nations, Christ our cornerstone, come to save your people. O Emmanuel, 
O come, O come, Emmanuel, a king, a teacher, a hope, and a saviour. Come and save us. Amen. And we end our prayers tonight with a traditional Celtic prayer of blessing. At work, at rest, at leisure, the peace of God, the creator, to you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, go with you on every side and at every turn, each day and each night, for all eternity. Amen.